there's a uh, dynamic duo of neurodegeneration um, with, um, with mercury. Um, so mercury vapor passes through your cell membranes across your blood brain barrier and into your central nervous system, causing immunological, neurological, and psychological problems. At the same time, mercury is leaching into your saliva and being swallowed, making its way down the digestive tract. A lot of people who have lots of amalgam like this, um, they have a lot of gut issues and it also damages your immune system. Remember everyone, your brain is a primary target for heavy metals and the neurological symptoms are everything from depression, anxiety, irritability, memory loss. And you're speaking to someone who is in a profession, dentists, when I graduated dental school in 1983, dentists had the highest rates of depression and suicide, the highest rate of suicide. Now, you know, that they, you know, if you remember Alice in Wonderland, the Mad Hatters, the Mad Hatters were using mercury in the brims of top hats. Well, dentists are, a lot of dentists are Mad Hatters and, um, and they're working, um, absorbing this mercury vapor. And there's a lot of um, Parkinsonism, Alzheimer's, dementia, all of these things related to mercury exposure. And so this is an interesting uh, slide, a little hard to read, but that blue box at the top there, the symptoms of mercury toxicity and Alzheimer's disease are identical. So if you look, the irritability, anxiety, depression, memory loss, agitation, so on and so forth, identical. So it's the same biochemical hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. We need to eliminate the use of this in every patient and we need every dentist to understand the safe removal. Um, so inorganic mercury does, this was a study um, not that long ago um, that talked about Yes, the inorganic mercury plays a major role in Alzheimer's disease. Um, and um, it, it uh, exposure to mercury causes the formation of neurofibrillar uh, tangles and also amyloid plaques. So I, we can go on and on. I was a producer of this um, film. Um, this was uh, evidence of harm. Uh, and, and this was a brilliant documentary that goes into the, all of the politics and all of the history of the use of dental amalgam. You can get this online, I think even at Amazon. Um, you can see clips of this or you can actually download the whole. I'd really recommend um, uh, that everyone take a look at it. We're going to go on to other sources of heavy metals so everyone is aware. I realize we're going to finish this presentation and everyone's going to go, oh my God. <laughs> I've got at least two or three of these in my mouth. Some people have more. So we'll, I'll, I'll be happy to answer questions and give you kind of uh, the, the good. The important thing to realize is, is that we're fixable. We're fixable. So getting this toxicity out is an important step, but we are fixable. Um, so there is a... Um, uh, the next um, area is these, um, you know, these look like, oh, these are porcelain, right? No, it's a metal thimble with porcelain on top. And often, if you look at the lower uh, left side, you'll see wearing of the porcelain off of the crown, you're down to the metal. So these are, what's in these? Well, 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 nickel. You know, it's often a toss up. Mercury is really bad, but nickel is carcinogenic. And a lot of the porcelain um, in these, P they're called PFMs, right? Porcelain fused to metal crowns, PFMs. Um, and we were looking at lead. So lead in the dental porcelain itself is used to create some reflective properties or a sparkling appearance. But a lot of these um, non-precious PFM crowns, you have nickel, lead, arsenic, chromium, cadmium. And, um, and so a lot of these are um, alloys, which are very har harmful. So we're not just looking at mercury, we're looking at other things. Um, there's a discount code called TRUTH15%. Uh, and um, 
this was a study looking at the toxicity um, with zebrafish <laughs> embryos and and larvae and and um, very very toxic um, nickel chromium cobalt chromium really not good alloys. So let's take a look at another metal which has traditionally been used in a lot of biologic prosthetics, um, orthopedic devices, but especially dental implants. Um, all of these, look at some of these um, prosthetics in the human body um, from shoulders, hips, knees, chest, people who've had, you know, at car accidents, rebuilding the chest with, with, with metal. Um, and so we, we, it's been around 50 years. And um, when we first did dental implants, uh, one of the founders uh, of, of the original dental implants, um, uh, developers of the original dental implants was a uh, hematologist actually who discovered it, Dr. Per Ingbar uh, Branemark. Uh, per Ingbar Branemark um, was doing um, uh, um, studies on bone marrows and femurs of animals and, he would stick these titanium cylinders into the femur and then he'd try to retrieve it. And he saw that the bone grew around it really quickly. And we thought that, wow, this is fantastic. The bone grows around the implant so fast. And well, we can give people, you know, a new, a new set of teeth. So it was a great thing. Except when we started to understand that the reason the bone grows so quickly, it's inflammation. The body's trying, it's almost like scar tissue bone growing around it doesn't really even have a good blood supply. It's more what we call sclerotic bone. And um, the, the interesting thing about this is that over time, lots of unhealthy things happened. And we would see all of this gum tissue turning almost purple, uh, purple around here. And if you look down here, we see, oh, this scar tissue bone is dissolving around. And if you look at the lower right, look how much bone is lost. What's going on here? What is going on here? We thought these were a good thing. Well, these titanium implants have been shown to be inflammatory. So over long term, they do cause inflammation. And, and at full disclosure, I had one, I had several of these placed in my mouth. I've already removed one and I'm going to remove the other one shortly and replace it with a ceramic or zirconia implant. So zirconium, I don't know if I have any pictures of zirconium, but um, zirconium is a ceramic material. Um, it's often referred to as a white metal, but the bone that grows around it is more vascular. It has a blood supply. So um, that we're going to answer questions at the end. So I know people have their hands up and I'm kind of, uh, I'm sure um, provoking a lot of interest and in questions about this, but I'll do my best to get to all your questions at the end. And, um, but I, what I wanted everyone to understand is that these are a source of long-term inflammation and these are also um, um, a source of corrosion. And there are titanium particles from dental implants that go all over the body. So you see a schematic here um, uh, with the lungs, uh, liver, and the kidneys here. These particles go everywhere. So these titanium particles can be detected on the, on the bone surface right away. And then the concentration of these particles can be distributed in the human body related to the distance it is from that. So obviously the kidneys are furthest from your mouth, but it could also come from your hip and released from the implant. They enter the blood and migrate to multiple organs. Um, the important thing uh, it, to understand here is sometimes these implants are well integrated in bone. And so we really have to make an important decision that it might not be in the best interest to remove these implants and put in a ceramic implant. Um, we may want to monitor it if it isn't corroded, if it doesn't look like this. And it's important to really let patients know that um, there are alternatives to metal implants now. And we have zirconium. 
And we have zirconia bridges where we don't even have to put an implant in the bone. We have um, removable prosthetics as another option, um, not as comfortable, um, but the, the, uh, the release of titanium particles from implants comes from a lot of different things. And it can be stimulated by um, drinking orange juice or um, fluoride is very acidic. And we're going to get into fluoride. That's probably the biggest public health disaster uh, of the last uh, 75 years. Um, um, dumping a basically hazardous chemical into the water supply under the guise of preventive dentistry. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm.